You're listening to the Options Insider Radio Network, the home of the Options Podcast. For more quality options programs, visit theoptionsinsider.com or search for Options Insider Radio Network in your podcast provider of choice. Listeners can also access all of our programming through our mobile app available in the iTunes and Google Play stores. Select programs are also available via live stream at Mixler.com slash options dash insider. That's M-I-X-L-R dot com slash options dash insider. Don't forget to follow along with your favorite programs and submit your own questions for the hosts at Twitter.com slash options, StockTwits.com slash options, Facebook.com slash the options insider, or via questions at the options insider.com. And now, it's time for the show that breaks down the options market from unusual activity alerts to market analysis, strategy overviews, listener questions, and much more. If it involves puts and calls, then our all-star panel will break it down. It's time to hit the option block with your host, Mark Longo from the Options Insider Media Group and co-hosts. Uncle Mike Tussaw from St. Charles Wealth Management, along with Mark the Greasy Meatball Sebastian and Andrew the Rock Lobster Joe Venazzi from OptionPit.com. And now, get ready to hit the Option Block. All right, everybody. That music means it is time once again for everyone's favorite bi-weekly options extravaganza known far and wide as the option block. Not coming at you bi-weekly this week, of course, the big Thanksgiving holiday here on Thursday. Markets are closed. I'm not a monster. I'm not going to make Uncle Mike and the greasiest of meatballs and or the rockingest of lobsters abandon their family to come talk markets on a day that they're closed. Nor would I expect you folks to have to listen. Go, go hang out with your family. So no option block on Thursday. So you get one taste only this week of the bi-weekly goodness listeners. Hopefully you enjoy it. Luckily for you, if you need more in your lives, there's other content hitting the network. And of course, there's an archive of this show going back over a decade, over a thousand episodes. So you can certainly feast and binge on some option block content if you are missing it on Thursday. My name, of course, Mark Longo from theoptionsinsider.com, as well as from the ever scintillating network upon which so many of you are out there binging these days. We welcome all comers out there, whether you're coming in on the old Apple Podcasts or the Audibles or YouTubes or Google Podcasts or via our mobile app or our website, however you get it. It's some uh, donkey cart in Estonia with a can and string. You're listening there, however you're getting it. Welcome to all of you. If you like what you hear, do rate it and review it on your platform of choice. Does help a lot of new people continue. Thousand plus episodes in, 10 plus years in, still new people discovering the show all the time, which is great to see. We want to keep that process rolling. So if you like what you hear, keep rating and reviewing. And of course, if you need more in your lives, you just missed awesome double pro week last week because we're coming into the holiday this week. So not going to make guests come in around the holiday either. So double pro week hit us last week. We had, of course, uh, Mr. Oracle, New Hampshire himself, Mr. Matt from Orads talking about sell offs and rallies and garbage VIX and spy puts as well as a lot of you folks have questions. About crypto, we had uh, Mr. Greg Magadini, one of the Meatballs buddies over there, coming in to answer all of your questions about crypto skew and volatility and all the impact of FTX and all these different assets out there. A fascinating Q&A. Check it out. Theoptionsider.com slash pro is the place to go. And listeners, we must kick off. Even though it's a truncated week, we have to kick it off in high style. So it is time for many of your favorite segments. It is time. Can you guess that 80s wrestler via his or her entrance music today? This is another pretty top tier 80s wrestler out there. Iconic in many ways. Uh, he had one in particular <laughs> iconic, let's just say, thing about him that I will try to mute because it occurs right at the beginning of the music we're playing. I'm going to try to mute it because if you hear that, you will instantly know. And if you don't, 
I might have to suggest you surrender your 80s wrestling card at your door. We all carry it in our wallets right there next to our credit cards and ID. 80s wrestling fandom card. You will have to surrender it. If you hear that noise, I will try to strategically mute the music. I may not be successful, but I will try. In which case, we shall see who emerges victorious. Can you name this 80s wrestler, listeners? Buzz, Oops, buzz. I, I may I may have not been good at my strategic yeah, muting. Jim <laughs> I thought it was over, but it's still, he was still owing. <laughs> <laughs> that man could hoe. Dang, he was going for a while. <laughs> uh, well, I tried. <laughs> I cracked myself up clearly. That voice, of course, the tiniest of voices, the greasiest of meatballs. Mr. Mark Sebastian from OptionPit.com, I say as I recover from my Coughing fit here. Mr. Meatball, A, welcome back to the program. <laughs> B, I'm, I'm sure you were struggling with it until you heard that iconic hoe. Were you not, sir? Uh, I had my ideas. That sounded very hacksaw Jim duggan didn't it? Just kind of chipper and happy and and kind of goofy. Uh, so I think I would have gotten there. But the hoe did give give it away. I will say this. When I went to my first ever live wrestling show in like the late 80s. I think I was around 12 years old. My dad took me in Connecticut there. We saw Ultimate Warrior versus Andre the Giant, which was the main event, which, come on, does it get any better than that? But as we were walking in, everybody outside was just yelling, ho, and running around, stomping around with boards and stuff. My dad thought, what is wrong with all these nut jobs? Why are they all yelling? (laughs) And I had to explain to him, no, dad, it's Hacksaw. And he just didn't get it. But yes, it was an iconic moment, an iconic shout of an 80s wrestler there. If you were at any events or anything in the 80s, chances are also the Bushwhackers also yelled a ho a lot too. There's a lot of ho yelling going on. Different time <laughs> out there in the 80s. <laughs> Let's also welcome on Uncle Mike Tussaud from St. Charles Wealth Management. Uncle Mike, were you also in that neck of the woods until I failed at my strategic muting, sir? I was at first I was thinking it might be Big Boss Man but based on your hints because I know in his song he talks about Cobb County, Georgia and things like that. So that's where I was going with, and then heard the hoe, but Seabass beat me to the buzz, so um, snooze you lose, but uh, yeah, the, the hoe does give it away. <laughs> that does pretty Dunn. much give it away. If you don't recognize that one, listen, like I said, surrender your card at the door as we keep on rolling right on into the trading block. It's time to break down the latest topics, trades, and trends in the world of options. It's time for The Trading Block. All right, listeners, let's get into it. Let's break down what the heck is trading on this truncated holiday week and taking a little bit of a break right now out there in most of the major indices. Listeners, the S&P hanging right around 39 half, so still within spitting distance of that 4,000 level, off about a third of a percent right now. Puts us well in line for our question of the week. Listen, I got a feeling this is going to be a contentious one. Just went live. Looks like it's already shaping up to be a a contentious one. We'll get to that in a little bit, listeners. But yes, uh, another red start to the week. Though, who knows? These things could change in the span of five minutes. S&P off about a third of a percent. Dow kind of unched most of that due to the riotous love going on at Diz right now. <laughs> that roar you may have heard echoing across the internet last night, listeners, were millions of Disney fans just celebrating in triumph when the much maligned, much hated CEO Bob Chapek was kicked to the curb, replaced by Bob Iger again. So Disney was up nearly 10% at one point today. That, of course, uh, lifting the Dow pretty much to unched Right now, what are your thoughts out there? Is that meaningful impact? The stock up nearly 10 handles. They seem to think so. Uh, Chapek, like we said, not exactly a beloved figure <laughs> in the Disney world. Doesn't sound like he was very beloved by the internal workings over there, too. And certainly the investor is not liking him. That stock taking him. You can get away with a lot if your stock is up. But being unpopular, much, much derided in the public, and also having your stock down, that's kind of an untenable thing for most most CEOs out there. And he got the axe 
unceremoniously over the weekend, immediately replaced. So that's kind of interesting. And then uh, NASDAQ off a full 1% right now. So that feeling the brunt the worst. As we kicked off the show, as we were debating all things Hacksaw, we had uh, VIX a little bit shy of 23, about a 2290, down a little over a point, about 1.2 points from Thursday's show. Of course, it is a holiday week. So probably unless we continue to sell off, then look for VIX to probably continue to uh, trend lower. VIX, same deal, 77, down about four points from Thursday's show. VXX, 1610, down about six tenths of a point. UVXY, eight and a half, down half a point. SVIX, 12 and three quarters, down about a tenth of a point. Uh, UVIX, eight and a half, up 0.15. And VOLQ, 2780, down about six tenths of a point from where it was this time last week. Let's go out to our winner this week of our 80s wrestling challenge. A Mr. Greasy Meatball, Mark Sebastian from OptionPit.com. A, do you have any enduring memories of one hacksaw Jim Duggan? Talk about a guy who did a lot with not much. He yelled ho and he carried a two by four and he wore blue trunks. That was about it for his gimmick. But he got a lot of living out of that very limited gimmick. And so you have any thoughts on him? Have at it. And then B, what are your thoughts on this somewhat weak start to the holiday week, sir? Well, he had that big, I like to, uh, you know, Mike had to appreciate his big football three-point stance clothesline that... Uh, he did have that, yes. That, that he would he would knock people down with, I think. Was that his closer? I want to say that was. Um, it, it may have been a uh, some sort of body splash or something like that, but I think that was his close. Uh, big fan, he always had the big thumb up. Uh, you know, he would uh, have an American flag with him, just... All, all working man. You know, he people liked him because he represented the working man, the the, the working class. You, you know, the blue shorts were representative of the blue collar that he represented. Um, just some great feuds with a lot of mid, a lot of really m- mediocre mid card guys. Uh, just all, all in all, just a, a top notch guy to root for. You're right, nothing special, but uh, just. Uh, just a wealth of happiness from that guy. You could just sense the joy in him when he was wrestling. And I, I think that's why, peop- uh, why people liked him so much. People forget he almost broke the business. He and Iron Sheik uh, pulled over or in a car accident together. I forgot what it was. But they a bad guy and a good guy driving together back when that did not happen. He got unceremoniously fired as a result. He didn't break kayfabe back then. That was serious business, sir. Yeah, I, I'd forgotten about that, but... Uh, you know, the Iron Sheik, there's another guy that apparently is like the nicest guy on the planet. But, you know, he had to play a certain role. Uh, but, uh, you know, everybody loves that guy now. It's amazing how like historical bad guys are now like so, uh, you know, uh, are so well loved. And a lot of the historical faces are absolutely <laughs> just disdained <laughs> by they, the general. They made public. a lot of work it's to crazy the way that worked. Yeah. Right. Find me someone that doesn't like Sergeant Slaughter. Find me someone that doesn't like the Iron Sheik. And then turn around and find me someone who loves the Ultimate Warrior and Hulk Hogan still. Uh, I, I will find you someone who doesn't know the wrestling business they did, very well. They did a lot of work to elevate I can find you someone who loves the Ultimate Warrior. Yeah, I do like Warrior. I, not as a man. As a, as a wrestler, yes. As a man, I agree he had, uh, shall we say, deep problems. <laughs> but yes, as a, as a wrestler, that was my guy. Definitely. Definitely. As a young voice of options, that was definitely my guy. <laughs> well, right. I, I, I get how I get it. But, you know, you look back and his wrestling matches were terrible. Um, the guy, the guy could, literally couldn't do anything. He wouldn't sell anything. He'd no sell stuff he wasn't supposed to no sell. And just all in all, just not a very good wrestler. Hulk Hogan, just as bad. Uh, you know, everyone loves Roddy Piper. He was a, a heel. Everyone loves Andre the Giant. He well, mostly a heel, you would say. Um, you know, it, it's a good it's guy amazing though, the way. Like the last four years he was the heel, but before that he was a good guy. Oh, there you go. Um, but it's amazing how all the heels, everyone's like, Yeah, those were really nice guys. Uh I guess the one the one kind of well, you know, was was Ric Flair, I mean, he would he was kind of both, right? He would bobble between heel and face, right? He was and whatever face. he wanted to be. He he was the he was the dirtiest player in the business, but everyone always loved him anyway. So yeah. 
he was of of the NWA crowd from back in the day. They kind of did their own thing, and so they necessarily didn't have the uh, heel and face thing quite as much as the WWF did back in the eighties. It was yeah. kind of a different way of doing it. Yeah, because then the Attitude Era came in, and then the bad guys became the good guys. <laughs> You're right. You're right. And then you know, I would say the ultimate heel that everyone loves is uh, the one man gang. People love that guy. Uh, Kamala, Kamala, the African, the, uh, Hakeem, the African dream, uh, if you will. Uh, but yeah, a lot of these guys are, are, are turned out to be good people. Um, but yeah, those are my memories. So I, I would say that to Jim Duggan's credit, he was hundred percent baby face and nary a person doesn't love that guy, him and Dusty Rhodes. Well said. I agree with that. It shows you also how, how. Actually, they were pretty decent actors because these guys had to work hard to be jerks, some of them. <laughs> All right, Mr. Meatball, what's catching your eye out there in a somewhat lackluster start to the week, sir? Yeah, well, I, I, let's start with, with the, the VIX index. The VIX is we're coming off a, a weekend. So VIX, all things being equal, should be down 0.7, uh, up seven-tenths of a, a point or so. And in fact, it is down, which is uh, pretty crazy when – you, you think about it, um, you know, that said, we're having the inside day of inside days. We're heading into a holiday week. Uh, and uh, really, the only kind of market driving news is that and then Apple being off almost 2% and Disney, you know, freeing itself of Bob to get its original Bob. Uh, and I, I think that's the big news. And then you know, I continue to be kind of shocked that the the absolute disaster in crypto has not bled out into general markets. Uh, the one shoe drop, as I read, I think the one shoe drop that that would really cause problems for the market would be Grayscale. Uh, Grayscale has all those um, ETFs around. You know, they were really the first. Uh, you know, trust that you could buy that would hold these, the the these ETF these uh, these cryptos, and if confidence falls in that in some of those names, uh, even more than it is, they're trading at massive discounts. Um, that would be a uh, I think problematic. Frankly, if you if you believe Grayscale, uh, the trade of the year is to buy Grayscale. Bitcoin trust and unload Bitcoin itself. Yeah. 43% um, right now is the discount. <laughs> yeah. And, the, you know, if, if you think people aren't worried, Coinbase bonds are trading at about a 50% haircut um, out to 2028. Uh, so there is some, some fear. You have to wonder at what point does that kind of pollute into, uh, into some of these, some of these names. It's certainly bad for a name like square, uh, and it's certainly bad for an Odell Beckham that took his entire salary in 2021 in Bitcoin. Yeah, he's getting a little bit of a haircut there as well. And so is Tom Brady with his FTX investments. All sorts of fun out there. Yeah, the, the Grayscale's been trading at a discount for some time. If you don't know the hell we're talking about, listeners, check out our shows like the Crypto Rundown coming up today because we like you folks. Don't want you to wait immediately after the option block. That's not so much we like you folks out there. But yeah, it's, uh, it's at about a 43% right now, which is a record low discount to that grayscale. Again, people are starting to have some security concerns or not, but proof of reserve concerns over there at grayscale. And they're not sharing that info, which is never, never a good thing out there. So yeah, that discount has been hovering for a while, but it is getting higher. Some people think it might get up to like 70% if all these concerns start to play out. So yes, that contagion is spreading. We'll get to all that out there in the crypto rundown. What does that mean for vol and skew and all the, Major crypto assets that you trade. We'll find out in a little bit, listeners. Now let's go out speaking of crypto. Forget about 80s wrestling. This guy, I mean, just loves himself some crypto. He is the unclest of Mike's Uncle Mike Tussauds from St. Charles Wealth Management. Uncle Mike, you touched on it a little bit. If you have any enduring memories of Hacksaw you want to share, have at it. B, if you want to just extol your love for crypto again, by all means, have at it. And then C, if there's time, what's catching your eye in the markets today, sir? Well, I mean, Hacksaw Jim Duggan. I mean, how can you not love the guy? He was... He was definitely a he was probably a top ten favorite of mine back in the day. That's for sure. Um, 
he he loved America and he could get the whole crowd to go, you know, every time he's during a wrestling match, he'd go, Oh, the rest of the crowd would repeat it. And I mean, that's, you gotta love how that guy can do what he did. Um, it's sad that him and the iron Sheik decided to get crazy one night, probably happened more than one night, but they at least got caught the one night. And, um, that's what happens. I mean, it's a great life lesson. Uh, for all you young Hulkamaniacs out there. Uh, but uh, with that, it's kind of sad that it went down the way with which it did. And uh, he never really was the same after that incident with the Iron Sheik. And uh, it was just interesting to watch uh, the interviews that he's done, that he did about. He talked about Vince McMahon was more mad at him for hanging out with the Iron Sheik than he was about getting busted for the drugs. <laughs> and um, it was just... Uh, very interesting the story that goes behind it with that and then like his three-point stance thing i cannot confirm it but i have a theory on where he originally got that move from uh he the person he got that move from was a battle royal participant in wrestlemania 2 he was not known for being a pro wrestler but he was actually in the the battle royal in wrestlemania 2 does anyone know who that could possibly be i do i do who's that william refrigerator Perry, your William. cool points just went up significantly with me for knowing that. Yeah, because uh, 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 it, that took place at the Rosemont Horizon. It and did. So they had uh, they they got, and this is in the middle of you know this is eighty five. This is you know refrigerator Perry mania. Uh, you know when all of a sudden it was kind of hip to be three hundred pounds. Yeah. And, you know, <laughs> pass the extra stuffing. That was that was the the statement for people with William Refrigerator pair. It really was. And so in, in WrestleMania two and the Battle Royal, because that was a unique WrestleMania. It was it was in New York, Chicago and L.A. But the Chicago section of it at the Rosemont Horizon, uh, they had a Battle Royal. There was a bunch of fo NFL football players in there. Uh, and there was a bunch of wrestlers. And uh, it was just interesting. Jimbo Covert, the offensive tackle for the Bears, he got interviewed by Mean Gene Okerlund shortly after the Battle Royal. And he went on about how he was cheated in the Battle Royal and how he was really upset with everything. But, um, yeah, it was definitely a lot of interest. And then with Jim Duggan coming onto the scene a year or two later, that makes that's my theory that because William the Refrigerator Perry did that exact move, made the crowd go nuts when he did it at the at, at WrestleMania 2. I, my theory is that Jim Duggan may have gotten it from the fridge. But Interesting. You, never know. you taught me something today. I, I had no idea there was a correlation between the fridge and Hacksaw. Something to ponder. One to, one to grow on, kids. Only on the option block can we come up with a correlation with William the Refrigerator Perry and Hacksaw Jim Duggan. But it's only a theory. I cannot prove it. But anyway, with the markets themselves, I mean, let's just get the, the Bitcoin thing out of the way. It, it, it's really awful. Uh, so um, it, it just is. Um, it's just a bunch of hippies that were ordering pizza after uh, doing some illegal activities in certain states is my is my theory as to how Bitcoin got started. And that's uh, there you have it. Um, with that being said, the market in general, uh, not a lot of movement right now. And I don't expect a lot of movement this week. There really is typically not a lot of movement the week of Thanksgiving. We might get a move here, here and there. But uh, for the most part, it's a dead week. And, um, you know, it's it's with this that. Uh, the only thing that I really have to, to add to this today would be my annual advice on um, on pumpkin futures and that uh, you should have sold your pumpkin futures by now. Uh, definitely invest in Christmas tree futures because there's going to be a thing for that in the next few weeks. But by all means, stay away from Turkey because it has no future. And that's my market advice for oh, the day. Wow. There we go. Our annual Uncle Mike wow. dad joke here for, for our Ugh. Thanksgiving episode. <laughs> Leave the dad jokes to the experts, Mike. <laughs> I think the meatball speaks for all of our listeners when he says, Ugh. <laughs> let's watch our pallets of that listeners. Get on into what's lighting it up out there in a somewhat light day out there in the markets. Vic's doing a whole lot of nothing right now. 143,000 contracts. That's late July, early August kind of numbers, or maybe uh, let's check back in about a month and change <laughs> late December kind of numbers. But right now, that's not a heck of a lot, listeners. Of course, again, truncated holiday week. Uh, the ADV 577 right now, so back below 600K after hanging out there north of it, I should say, for a good chunk of last week. 
Last week had some weird VIX volume. If you want to check out the show, which we said was another weird one, uh, check out Ball Views. We talked all about the VIX volume last week on that show. Spy 4.09 million contracts on the tape right now. That's a decent clip. It's a little bit north of halfway to its ADB, which is about exactly 8 million contracts right now. Not quite as close for the ass. The ass is about 1.26 million contracts right now. And its ADB is still hanging out about 2.8 million. Uh, where are we? IWM, small caps, 332,000 contracts. Uh, the ADB, 934. So still a robust ADB. doesn't seem like we're going to get it in small caps today. And the Qs, 1.45 million. The ADB, 2.8 million contracts. Let's get out to the single name, see what kind of day we're having out there today. Cost you 219,000 contracts to break into the top 10 today. So that gets us to DraftKings. DraftKings off a buck 22 or 8%. Uh, they are coming for DraftKings yet again. They came for them after their earnings recently, and they took a nice shellacking then. And it seems like uh, they're coming for them again, even though they are much higher than they were. Than they were, they got back on the fourth. They got down to eleven dollars and thirty-one cents. So they're thirteen eighty-four right now. So they're still above that. But uh, oh, report of unauthorized money withdrawals and a hack. Oh, that's great. I have a DraftKings account. So I should probably go check that. <laughs> <laughs> so that will, yes, that will certainly cause some consternation out there at a name like that. This seems to be somewhat endemic right now. So uh, excuse me while I go check my DraftKings account. 219,000 contracts to number 10. Number nine, we're going out to good old Paps Blue Ribbon, a.k.a. PBR. Of course, this is Petrobras. Uh, trading 11 and a half bucks, up about 13 cents today. It's not a big banger for them today. But 225,000, I'm going to guess just flying leap out here that it's going to be some funky three-legged fly or some other type of size spread that has like 100,000 contracts in each leg and isn't a huge crazy thing. Let's let's tell you what. Let's go find out right now. Uh, looks like we've got 20,000 of the D6 calls and then 20,000 of the D8 calls and then 15,000 of the sevens. So funky kind of fly, I guess, out there. Actually, some of those are in the weeklies and some of those are expiring in the monthly. So it's not quite all one-to-one. So it's a little bit of funk out there in PBR. Number eight, talk about that crypto contagion. It's Coinbase, 226,000 contracts off three and a half bucks or nearly 8%, I should say, today, trading right around 41 and three quarters. Uh, it has rebounded off its low at 4061. So it's about a buck 10 north of where that was, but also was trading 4464 earlier today as well. So obviously well off those highs. Uh, obviously a lot of folks concerned about Coinbase. They are, of course, a legally regulated entity here in the US. They have to hold themselves to a different standard than an FTX, but still. There are concerns out there about everything crypto related right now. Number seven, Chip Zone coming early again today. We've got AMD, 240,000 contracts. Pretty light for the Chip Zone as well. Usually we expect AMD to be somewhere north of 400,000 contracts. But again, it is a truncated holiday week. 72.30 right now, off about a buck 20 right now, or 1.6% for AMD. Uh, number six, the artist formerly known as Facebook, now Meta, hanging out. 268,000. We're at number six. We're still below 300,000 listeners. So it's kind of a light day. Again, 11010 10 is where it's hanging out and off about two bucks, but still well north of the 88 level it was when it announced the layoffs. So Street does like a good layoff out there, and that's still reflected in this stock. Uh, number five, back to the chip zone. It's NVIDIA. Let's see if they're doing a little bit more respectable paper. No, NVIDIA pretty light today as well. 289,000 contracts for NVIDIA. So the chip zone pretty meager today. 153 and a quarter off about 80 cents or about half a percent right now for NVIDIA. Number four, we just talked about them. Hashtag Bob Swap 2022. <laughs> if you know what I'm talking about, look on Twitter, listeners. Of course, they're swapping Bob Chapek for Bob Iger. 524,000 contracts on the tape right now for Diz. Still up five and a half bucks or nearly 6%. So bucking the overall sell-off trend. It got back up north of the par handle again. It got up to $100.89 this morning. The low was 96. Opened at 112. Shot up to almost 101. Then it drifted back to 96. I know it got into the 80s when they, when they finally kicked Bob C to the door, their listeners. So intriguing stuff. Number three, we got the Amazonians. Our top three looks like pretty much... The usual suspects out there. Amazon, 689,000. 91, 94 off 220. So still hanging out in the low 90s, kind of back where it was when we posted our poll about it a few weeks ago, actually a little bit lower. So Facebook still the winner in that poll, at least from a recent perspective. On the voting long-term perspective, you guys all went unanimously almost towards Amazon. But right now, 
Facebook taking that one. Uh, number two, we've got the fruit company. I've said it before. I'll say it again. The market hates a day when Apple is red, so they hate it today. Apple off nearly three bucks or 1.87%. So a 2% sell off day almost for Apple. That's a lot. 148, about 40 is where it's hanging out right now. 723,000 contracts on the tape. And speaking of names that people hate right now, Tesla, my goodness. Coming for this one as well, 169 and about a half off 1060 or nearly 6%. Uh, the low for the day was 168 and a half. So they were a point lower. Uh, they are just coming for this one. They're coming for all EBUs today. Concerns, a lot of concerns in that space right now. Tesla pretty much at about a two year low right now. So they are coming for Tesla just in January, just the beginning of this year, the first session of this year, listeners. Tesla opened the year 399. 93. My goodness, how the mighty have fallen. 169 and a half right now. And folks are eyeing this downward spiral out there. Another 321,000 cars getting recalled as well. That doesn't help. Is Tesla headed for 100? A lot of people seem to be debating that right now online. Either way, it's good for 1.78 million contracts, listeners. So that's a lot of paper out there for Tesla. What isn't a lot of paper is the earnings season this week, as you might expect, it's a truncated week, but we still have some names popping off that you have heard of, listeners. Today, we've got Zoom. We were just using them earlier today. Zoom, one of the pandemic darlings, now perhaps a bit of an also-ran. Also, Dell, what's going on with them? Tomorrow, Best Buy, a name that people have been ringing the death knell on seemingly prematurely for a long time. Dollar Tree, Uncle Mike's favorite fashion outlet, <laughs> Dick Sporting Goods. Uh, Medtronic out there in the med devices realm, Burlington Coat Factory, Abercrombie and Fitch. So if you like your shirtless adolescence, there you go, Abercrombie and Fitch and Jack in the Box and Nordstrom and HP. And Wednesday, you've got uh, John Deere and it's pretty much about it because it is the Wednesday before Thanksgiving listeners. But that doesn't concern John Deere. They're coming out come hell or high water. Uh, we do have some names popping off in the earnings move results today. Not a ton of uh, hot new names that you folks are focusing on unless you're really excited about Futu Holdings digitalized wealth management and brokerage out of China trading 50 bucks right now. <laughs> uh, they were pricing in 9.4%. They delivered 4%. So a little bit of underperformance out there in everyone's new favorites, Futu Holdings. But outside of that, not a heck of a lot popping off this morning. Uh, let's go out to the upcoming names again. We got Dell popping off. Today, after the bell, 42 bucks is where they were trading when we ran these numbers this morning. They were pricing in 288 in the past. They've moved 254, so a little bit of extra juice. Zoom kind of hanging out at about the same. They're today after the bell as well. 8164 is where they were trading. 1028 is what they're pricing in. The past they moved 1024, so almost exactly the same. That's interesting for Zoom. Best buy tomorrow before the bell. 7205 is where they were trading. They're pricing in six and a half bucks. In the past, they've moved 439. So a fair amount of extra juice in Best Buy. That is interesting. Uh, Dick's Sporting Goods, just talking about them. 10909. They're on the 22nd before the bell as well. They were pricing in 982. In the past, they've moved 867. Dick's has been an interesting one to watch during the pandemic. We'll see what they have going on out there. Let's go on out as well. We have so many here, listeners. Oh, let's go Jack in the Box. Why not? 22nd before the bell, 8540. Is where they were trading. They were pricing in four dollars and twenty cents. Get this, listeners. In the past, they moved two fifty three. So, a fair amount of extra juice in Jacks as well. Wow, a lot of juice in Jack in the Box. We don't really have them here in Chicago, so haven't really had a Jack in the Box in a long time. But uh, intriguing stuff nonetheless. The season also looking very intriguing. Hanging out right now, one hundred and fourteen percent, listeners. So that is well above our average of ninety two percent going back to before the start of the pandemic, pretty much. So. That's pretty much a certified banger out there. No new earnings trades being entered or exited today, but we are monitoring 77 long straddles and 48 long calendars for your earnings trading convenience, education, and entertainment. Speaking of entertainment and education and all of the above, let's get to a little bit of the old odd block. It's time to break down the most interesting, unusual, and downright questionable options activity that's been identified by TheOptionsInsider.com. It's time for The Odd Block. All 
All right, listeners, welcome to the Odd Block, the portion of the show we break down the weird, the wild paper that's lighting up our tapes. Not a heck of a lot going up out there today, but that's actually good because that gives us time to focus on what we said we were going to talk about at the end of Thursday's show. Remember I said we had a couple of interesting, pretty much one-day swings at the bat, and we would know by Monday's show how well they worked out. So let's get to those now. Well, let's kick things off, listeners. And everyone's favorite name, TPG Inc. Not going to tell you where it's trading right now. Bit of a spoiler. But a year ago, it was trading $34 even. Then it sold off to the low for the year of around 23 bucks. That was back in June. Then it has rallied. And on last Thursday, when we talked about it on the show, it was trading $35.59. And what did someone do? Someone came out. One day, a little bit of a swing at the bat there. They sold 5,156 of the Nov 35 puts for 40 cents, pretty much right on the bid. And the stock at the time was kind of dropping. It was starting to, when we talked about on the show, it was starting to threaten that 35 handle. And now they were going ex-div, so you always see some funky put paper when things go ex-div, so bear that in mind. But it looks like they were selling these puts for 40 cents. It was a one-day trade. They were either going to be wearing it at that 35 handle or they're going to be sitting on their 40 cents. And we would know by today's show. And it looked like on the time we were doing the show on Thursday, I kind of had the feeling that maybe they might be wearing it on this a little bit because this stock has obviously dripped below. I told you it got down to $23.09 in June. And it seemed like it was trending south again. They had just had earnings, so it was kind of a, a post-earnings type of trade. And it just seemed like they were maybe going to be wearing it on these. We talked about it. We did a check-in on these on yesterday, or excuse me, on Friday's oddities. And it seemed like at the time, the stock sell-off had mitigated. It was back up above 35. It seemed like things were trending in the right direction. But those puts were still open. Uh, So let's check back in on them now. The stock went out on Friday, listeners, 35.43. So that's north of the 35 handle out there, listeners, for all of you who are mathematically challenged. So that means they kept their 40 cents. These puts were still open, and they didn't really trade substantially all day long on Friday. So they never came and took these off. Listen, we were waiting for that moment. Maybe they would come back and buy them back. Nope, never happened. So they sold them. They kept all their 40 cents. And uh, looks like they ended up doing all right on these, making somewhere in the neighborhood of $200,000 on this one day swing for the fences. Mr. Meatball, what say you? Are you familiar with TPG? And what do you think about our, our one day trade? Looks like it worked out here, sir. Well, you know, if you're willing to swing it, I don't know anything about TPG partners, but uh, if you're willing to swing it and you can you can make some good money on some of these uh, very short term trades, if you've got the margin and and you're willing to accept the risk. Um, you know, we all know horror stories about, ex, you know, day before expiration, cheap option selling. Uh, but, uh, you know, to the winner, go the spoils, I suppose. They did have a moment. What did your partner, the Rock Lobster, call? He said someone on the floor used to say, you had to get the tickle. <laughs> and they kind of got the tickle. They broke the 35 handle briefly, 1030 on Friday morning, got the 3498. So it looks like this person maybe was starting to sweat there briefly, but then it turned around again and it looked good. So, you know, at the end of the day, if you're selling premium and you don't sweat a little bit, listeners, what fun is it? Did you really earn that premium? I say to you, no. So this person had to sweat a little bit, not much, but a little bit to make it just to remind them that they were alive, listeners. Let's go on out to another name we talked about on Thursday's show. We had a couple of one-day swings at the bat on Thursday's show. The other one was in the Meatball's favorite name all week long, listeners, in between shows. He's messaging me, telling me, did you see the latest moves in Campania Siderurgica? What a name. National SA, a.k.a. the National Steel Company of brazil this is like the meatballs up there with darden restaurants you can't stop talking about this name i won't tell you where it's trading right now a bit of a spoiler but on the year a year ago was trading three dollars and 88 cents got to its high for the year in april of 596 just within spitting distance of six bucks then they came for it hard by july 14th it was trading 245 and it kind of hovered in that range until our show on thursday when we saw the stock was trading 267 and paper came in and said, you know what? Enough of all this downside nonsense. We're going to be optimistic. We're going to come in. We're going to pay 20 cents, lift the offer for about 4,000, 3,963 of the Nove two half calls. Again, they paid 20 cents. And we, we checked in on these as well 
on Options Oddities on Friday, listeners. And it was kind of a bit of a horse race because they paid 20 cents for these things. They were the two half calls. So obviously you got to get up to somewhere around 270 to, to make any cash on these bad boys. And we were hanging out right around 270, about 267, uh, 268. And lo and behold, where did the stock close? 268. <laughs> so they pretty much did a whole heck of a lot of nothing. on. They actually lost a couple of the cents on these bad boys. Uh, let's see, where is the stock right now? Because hopefully they like their stock because they ended up uh, buying some. Right now, the stock is up a penny. So it's pretty much right around 268 still. <laughs> so hasn't really budged. So hopefully they, they're enjoying their SID calls. Because, and I should say their SID stock because they ended up getting what they wanted. They got not the massive pop, but they got the stock at pretty much uh, the break-even levels. Mr. Ro- Mr. Meepo, I should say, excuse me. A uh, whole heck of a lot of nothing going on here. They swung for defenses and they kind of ended up being a bunt, sir. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's about right. They, uh, they, they did, you know, they did all right, but, uh, you know, not, uh, I don't think it was what they were looking for. I think that that's pretty clear to be said. So can you do me a favor? Can you stop with the harassing me midweek about all things Sid? You know, I have other things I have Sorry to pay attention to. I can't be nonstop answering your, what about, you see this trade in Sid? No, I didn't. I'm just telling you right now, I didn't see it, okay? Just to, just, just leave me alone with the Sid. Instead, let's keep on moving to, <laughs> to your final name out here today, listeners. Get to some today paper. And again, kind of a light day out there today. So let's go on out to Patterson UTI Energy, ticker symbol P10. Uh, they're in the oil and directional drilling service. They also rent equipment for said services. Uh, trading 18 bucks right now off about 60 cents or a little over 3% today. So they are coming for it. Obviously, energy sector under a little bit of heat right now. Uh, a year ago, they're trading seven and a quarter. So they kind of saw the nice rally that a lot of the energy and energy related sector did this year. Looks like they topped out at about almost 20 bucks, 20 and a half bucks. They got that level a couple of times. They got there in June, uh, June 8th, our favorite day. And then they sold off by September. They're back down to $10.86. And they rallied hard again just in the last couple of months. On November 11th, they got up to that around 20 buck level again, pretty close to it, about 19 and change as well. So they threatened that 20 handle a couple of times. And right now trading $18, so they're a little bit below it. It looks like somebody not really going out on a huge limb <laughs> coming in this morning selling 10,500 of the Jan 12 puts, I said we're at an 18 even, listeners. They sold the 12 puts, so a whopping $6 out of the money. It's not getting too risky. Oh, they still got 25 cents for these bad boys. They were no bid at 55. <laughs> I'm guessing if you went in there with a 10 lot, maybe you wouldn't get that, at least not initially. Someone had to do a little bit of price discovery for you, but maybe now they're bid there. $16.82. Was, whoa, the stock was way lower. That makes more sense. Oh, okay, so the stock has had... What's been going on out here today? Okay, yeah, the stock sold off. It opened at 18 bucks, exactly where we are. And that's why I thought it was unched on the day, but they actually dipped in between to 16.75 just about 45 minutes ago. And they've since rallied. So this name has had done a lot of living in the last 45 minutes. <laughs> that makes more sense how they got these puts up. Okay, the stock was 16.82 when they got these puts off for a quarter, listeners. And looks like they, at least for now, have called the bottom here because that was a nice, nice level. Again, I don't think these puts are going to be 25 cent bid now, listeners, if you go out and try to follow. But intriguing, Mr. Meatball, looks like they got a well-timed put sale off here, at least for now here, in your other favorite, Patterson UTI Energy Inc. Uh, yeah, it, it certainly does. Um, you know, a lot of put selling into what we've seen over, been seeing over the last few days. Uh, you know, maybe maybe telling us that hey, Vols a little uh, Vols run its course, at least uh, for the holidays. You know, it has never run its course, will never run its course, listeners. It's the strategy block. So let's get to it. It's time to dispense options, wit, wisdom, and education. It's time for the strategy block. All right, everybody, welcome to the Strategy Block, the portion of the show where Uncle Mike dispenses his epic wisdom on all things turkey futures. If you're going to get in them, it's a very short-term trade, listeners. you got to kind of do it today. Uncle Mike, break it down for us. What are all your technicals 
for your once a year annual one day trade in turkey futures. Go. The one day trade in turkey futures. It's uh, it's quite the trade, let me tell you. But uh, you may want to avoid it because it's kind of like trading into earnings. Um, uh, the trade is dead upon the event. Ha <laughs> ha. Um, anyway, what I did want to talk about today that might be a little bit more prevalent for our listeners and what's happening right now. I, I ran into a case study. Uh, he wasn't even, he was, he was a client of another, of someone else at RCM. And so we just kind of talked about this, um, as a staff in terms of like, what, what would be the best thing for this client to do? He's, he was a self-directed trader. Um, once again, he wasn't my client. He was another gentleman's client. We just kind of had a discussion on it. And so he needs to take some losses for this year to outweigh some gains that he had with his non-qualified money by non-qualified meaning non-IRA money. Uh, he's an option guy, and so he has some gains, but he needs to offset some of his gains so the tax man doesn't beat him up too badly. And so what he was looking at is he's like, okay, there is this one stock that I can take a loss on. And if he sells the stock, he will take a loss on it. It's a significant loss on the one stock. And overall, he's profitable on the year, so kudos to him. But there is one stock he was definitely not profitable on. And so what he decided to do is sell an in-the-money covered call to get out of the stock that way. And uh, it worked. And so from there, or actually, it looks like it's going to work. I don't know if it actually worked yet, but let's just say that it worked. Uh, from there, his question was, he wants to get back into the stock right away by selling a put to get into it. Now, the question that comes up is, does that qualify for a wash sale? And I think it's one of the things where I am not a tax person, but I want to tell you what I advised uh, in, in our meeting, what I advised for the client to do. Now, first off, what is a wash sale? Well, if you sell a stock, and this is all non-IRA money, if you sell a stock for a loss, you can claim a loss on. If it's for greater than a year, it's a, a long-term loss. If it's for less than a year, it's a short-term loss. But either way, you can claim a loss on it. And so from there... What you cannot do is buy the same stock again within 30 days. Now, one thing about the IRS tax code, it's very confusing and very limited when it comes to options. So from there, I would advise the client to not sell a put to get back into the stock. Reason being is because if you sell a stock and then buy a call on that same stock, the IRS is very likely going to deem that as a wash sale. Now, in terms of selling a put, that's kind of a gray area because if he was selling covered calls the whole time, you could make a case saying that he's still doing the same thing. He just doesn't own the stock anymore. But from a synthetic standpoint, it's the same thing. This is what I advise the client to do. So this way you have absolutely no red tape, no issues, and the tax man will not get you on this if you do what I'm about to suggest. I had suggested that if he wants to continue to collect his put premium month in, month out, and continue to wheel into and wheel out of the stock, for the 30-day period that he does not want to get put into wash sale mode, because I get wash sales myself now and then. They're not pleasant, but you got to deal with them at times if you're trading the same security. But what he can do to avoid that is he can sell a put on a similar stock. So, for example, let, let's say the stock is Home Depot. Maybe you want to sell a put on Lowe's for a month, then go back to Home Depot after a month. If the stock is, uh, well, and you can come up with a similar stock in any scenario with which you want. Um, and it was not Home Depot and Lowe's, by the way. Those are just the first two that came into my head. But something with which you can do if you're an income-based trader and you're trying to avoid running into the wash sale, you can take a month off from that stock. and so. By doing that, you have this plan in place in case something like this happens so you can actually claim that loss. Claiming losses can be very valuable on your tax returns. And uh, we're option traders and uh, we're lions and lions eat meat. And if the meat comes from uh, beneficial tax treatment on losses, we'll take that as well. So with that, that is the strategy block for Thanksgiving week. Eat that meat out there, listeners, as we keep on rolling right on into the mail block. It's time to take your seat on the all-star panel as we read your emails, tweets, Facebook messages, website comments, and much more. It's time for the mail block. All right, everybody. 
Welcome to the mail block, the portion of the show where we take on all comers with your Q's and our A's and also shine a light back on you folks like we did last week when we asked you folks, hey, these new daily options in leading indexes proving to be pretty popular. Are you guys trading them? If so, why? Give you three choices and the infamous other hedging event risk. <laughs> so, you know, your Fed comes along, you want to hedge something along those lines, or you're doing a little bit of short-term speculation, or you're doing some intra-week spreads, buying one day, selling another day, or you have the other. And 47.1% of you chose short-term speculation. So you're swinging for those fences on the same day, listeners, followed by 23.5%. So this one taking a surge towards the end, which was fun. Uh, intra-week spreads, that probably would have been my choice. And then 17.6% going the old hedging of specific event risks, Fed or whatever floats your boat out there. 11.8% saying other. Didn't get a ton of other responses, though, in terms of what your other is. And we always say reply or DM us or whatever you want with the answer. We want to know what your other, what is your other? I want to know what is your other use case? Maybe it's interesting. We want to talk about it here on the show. So the 11.8% of you who voted for other, most of you failed. So uh, try again this week. Our question this week is a contentious one. I can see a lot of debate spiraling out of control about this one. This came from a discussion we were having last week on the pro Q&A with Mr. Matt Amberson, where we were talking about, so what are we going to see next in the S&P? We've been hovering around 4,000 in the S&P. Obviously, everyone's focused on what's coming next. So simple. We're hovering around 4,000. We're putting it to you folks to decide the outcome. What will we see next, listeners? 3,000 or 5,000. That's it. No other third choices, no fun snide comments like I'm all in on crypto or anything like that. Just straight up 3,000 or 5,000. Let's go around the horn. Let's start with the greasiest of meatballs. Mr. Meatball, what is your guess? And then more importantly, what do you think our audience is voting for? We're going to see 3,000 or 5,000 first, sir. You know, uh, I'll start with the audience. They're a bearish crowd. They're going to say 3,000. And, uh, you know, I'll... We're definitely closer to 3,000. I think we could get there easily. Uh, we could easily get there with one bad print. So, and 5,000, maybe a little further off than people think. So, I'm going to go out and say, uh, I'm going to join the audience and say 3,000. Interesting. Interesting. Uncle Mike, our resident permable, the guy who likes to eat that meat as a lion out there. Uh, what is your vote? And what do you think our audience is voting for? See, I think the audience is a little bit more bullish than that. 3,000 is a long way down from where we are, and we've already gone a long way down. So I think the audience is um, a little bit more bullish than that. So I'm going to say 5,000 for the audience. And then for my vote, as totally angered as I am that you didn't put allow me to say I'm all in on crypto, I guess I'm going to be forced to say 5,000 as well. I almost put the Uncle Mike third choice in, but alas, we did not this week. Just straight up two choices. And right now, our audience is fading this rally. Again, this just went live. This is early voting listeners. We'll know more as the week unfolds. But right now, 75% exactly saying, look out below. We're heading for 3,000 next. Only 25% saying we're rally ho mode. It's 5,000. Get out there at options. Make your voice heard. Listeners, as we go into our final segment, it is time to go around the block. It's time to tell you what we'll be watching on our trading screens until the next episode. It's time for Around the Block. All right, everybody. Welcome to Around the Block, the portion of the show where we tell you what we're keeping an eye on. Until next Monday now, all the way through uh, this holiday truncated week, no shows on Thursday, obviously. Uh, we have uh, some shows coming at you on demand, so live to tape. They're pre-recorded coming for education Wednesday out there. We already did the pro Q&As yesterday, or I should say for Tuesday last week. And so, and Friday, I'm not a monster, not going to make everybody come in for volumes and oddities. And we know you folks want to spend time with your families and or elbowing grandmas out of the way on Black Friday to get those deals. So we won't get in the way of that. So pretty much today with the option block and the crypto rundown are going to be your, your live doses of content for this week. So a lot to keep an eye on until our next episode. Let's go to the uncle of Mike's first. Mr. Uncle Mike, sir, what are you keeping an eye on all the way until next week in our next episode, sir? Honestly, not much. I mean, I'll keep my eye on the markets to see if I have to make any adjustments or anything. But uh, if we do have a little bit of a move, unless it's some type of crazy news of some sort, I'm really not going to do anything. So uh, enjoy your holiday, everybody. 
and um, make sure you're, st- you're you're hedged for next week or whatever you need to do. You're keeping an eye on that 50% off toaster oven. You're getting ready to elbow grandma on the face, aren't you, sir? Honestly, I am not. I, I'm not much of a crowd guy, so um, uh, I'm, I'm really not, unfortunately. I have a good visual of you just throwing elbows to try to get in the door on Black Friday morning. And it's kind of fun, so I'm just going to let it reside in my head for a little bit. Uh, Mr. Meatball, same question for you, sir. What are you keeping an eye on until our next show on Monday, sir? You got a week off. Uh, yeah, I'm watching uh, Fed Minutes this week. Uh, we still have a few earnings. I want to see what Disney does for the next couple of days, and I'm keeping an eye on Apple. And uh, I want to see, actually, I kind of want to see what happens for the rest of the trading day today. The meatball, very short-term focus. He, too, eyeing that 50% off toaster oven. Grandma, he's coming for you. You better watch out. And we're coming on into our next episode, hot after this, listeners, so all of our pro folks. They get it in their air holes immediately for the crypto rundown. The rest of you wait till it hits the network out there for all that crypto action. But that music does mean we're coming to an end here for the option block. Let's go back around the horn one final time to the unclest of Mike, sir. If folks want to reach out to you over this truncated holiday week to talk crypto or any of your other favorite things, where should they go? What should they do? Hey, follow me on Twitter at Mike Tusa, T-O-S-A-W. Uh, I try to put out as much content as I can. There'll be another influx coming in the next week or so. Uh, and also, if you're looking to have a financial advisor uh, who does not only wash sale analysis, but also option trading, if it's deemed appropriate for the client and or hedging, of course, check out my website, stcharleswealth.com and set up a time to talk to me. There you go. And the greasiest of meatballs, sir. If folks want to reach out to you and talk about all the fun stuff you have cooking in the land of the pit where should they go what should they do yeah go to optionpit.com and uh check us out i'm writing a blog every day it's worth your time and worth the effort come and uh join and visit us he's a blogger optionpit.com to get the latest on all that goodness that's going to do it for us here on the option block this week listeners like i said crypto rundown coming up in a little bit for all you pro folks all you on-demand folks It'll be there on the network a little bit later on, but that is going to do it for us on the live side for the option block this week. Stay safe out there. I was joking. Don't elbow those grandmas in the face. They need their toaster ovens too. (laughs) Maybe stay home and get your deals at home instead. See your family. Have a great holiday week, and we'll see you back here next week. Another episode of the option block. Stay safe out there. You're listening to the Options Insider Radio Network, the home of the Options Podcast. For more quality options programs, visit theoptionsinsider.com or search for Options Insider Radio Network in your podcast provider of choice. Listeners can also access all of our programming through our mobile app available on the iTunes and Google Play stores. Select programs are also available via live stream at Mixler.com slash options dash insider. That's M-I-X-L-R dot com slash options dash insider. Don't forget to follow along with your favorite programs and submit your own questions for the hosts at Twitter.com slash options, StockTwits.com slash options, Facebook.com slash the options insider, or via questions at the options insider.com.